Welcome pool fans and thanks for tuning in to the 24th annual Derby City Classic here at Caesars Southern Indiana just outside of Louisville. I'm in front of this beautiful tight 5x10 Bigfoot table. Why is it Bigfoot? Well it's 20% larger than the regular 9-footer and well we've added 16 of the greatest players on the planet for the Diamond Bigfoot 10 Ball Challenge. We started with 16 of the greatest players down to eight, and today we're gonna have the final four to find out who this champion, this year's champion, will be. Let's meet the players right now. First up, he's third at the Whirlpool Masters, also two-time European tin ball champion. He's sponsored by Predator, KGHM, and Erg Buren from Lubin, Poland. Make some noise for Mieszko Furtinski. And his opponent is a U.S. Open 10-ball champion, All Japan champion, and China Open champion. Sponsored by Davini Cues from Davo City, Philippines. Make some noise for the Slayer, Lee Van Corteza. <laughs> Our referee for the match is Mr. Ricky Bryant. We're lagging for the break and sending it up to the AccuStats Skybox. Thank you, Derek. Welcome everybody. This is World Class Pool. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones here on the call. This is semi-final, no, quarter-final action of the 10-foot Bigfoot tournament. Jeremy, any opening thoughts for this one? Um, this should be a good match, of course. This is Fortunski. I uh, talked to him and his running man, Martin, last night. And Fortunski's en English is coming along, but it's still a little bit uh, new. Um, so, but he said he was pretty happy with the win. First time he's ever played on the 10 foot in any competition. He's hit a couple racks is all. I told him I thought it set up nice just because how simple he keeps it in a, a real powerful stroke. A lot of contrasting styles between these two, of course. Most of the time Lee Van plays, it's a little contrasting style because you'll see a very short backswing with a pretty decent follow through at times. But just looking at the two guys, you could see uh, a little more build on Fort Fortunski, right? And just probably a little more natural power. Two quality lags, both of them within a half inch of the end rail. Corteza came as close to freezing it as possible. Yeah, and I watched Fortunski warm up the break. I, did, I watched Lee Van practice a little bit, but no breaks. So the open hand bridge. He finds a way to make it effective, of course, but... You got to see really nice timing there. I mean, really good pop on the cue ball for an open hand bridge. And uh, if you watch Fortunski uh, practice the break, you would think uh, nobody's done it better. He was really hitting them nice, making both balls in the side. The four railers were holding the line. Of course, once you get in the match, Mark, you know how it all kind of changes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, tight two ball maybe by the five, a little awkward six and eight. I think it's playable though. So he's got to play this uh, with a nice aggressive stroke to the bottom rail, or the short rail rather, and then back up. He wants to get kind of straight here on the two, if it is tight by going by the five. This is going to be enough to make it easy. And if you're going to a half a pocket, uh, this is the wrong side to be. You can still make it, obviously, but it's not as generous. Like if you're cutting the ball by the five to the left side of the pocket, if you're not straight in, you'd rather be uh, a little on the other side of the two, believe it or not. Well, this will track the cue ball right at the three, but the, like yeah. you said, it might make it a hint more difficult to pocket this. I think he feels comfortable with it, though. And I think there's more room than we suspect. Yeah, he drew the ball nicely with outside, so normally... yeah. Unless it was super necessary, you'd stay away from side spin shooting to a, t a tight pocket. Boy, and how sweet was that stroke, by the way? Really nice. Now he's sizing up how he's going to handle that six ball if that's an issue. It looks like it might be from here, but you can't tell. You no, know, the so. camera angle here showing him shoot to three says it probably is an issue for yeah. sure. And we can certainly get fooled, and these guys can certainly almost fool the pool balls themselves with with a spinning the ball and throwing it in from different places, kind of manufacturing things that really aren't there. The good thing is he can pull the ball, get a little more out, get an angle on the five to attack coming two rails at the 6'8", or maybe even three rails up mm -hmm. underneath the back of the 6'8". Yeah, short side position really isn't an option here. 
No, and he could pull it tightly, three rails catching the long rail coming into the 6-8, kind of splitting them. There's all kinds of ways he can attack here. Uh, he was trying to hold that angle. Now, the prudent play probably is three rails underneath. If you feel confident going by the 10 and having it spread to the top rail and then back at the balls. But if you come two rails at him, you can't fault that. No. No, anything you can do. He's a little bit thin, but maybe it's thicker than I think. I don't know if we can grab the overhead real quick, but if we can, here's what Jeremy's saying. Here and come into the back of it here, or you can, if you can hit it thick enough, you can come in there this way and drop down yeah. either one. Or just this is the backside play that now you can go he's around, go around him. Yeah. And he almost knew that. That's why not only the shot kind of needed a lighter speed to lengthen it a little bit, but he kind of knew that was a possibility as well. And I'll tell you, funny thing is, he can't make it, but he got almost as close to the position to be able to make it as you can. This is funny, huh, Mark? Very, because there's double kiss when you try to yeah. negotiate this. So you got to play all cue ball here. And the double kiss actually has a better chance of happening at that lighter speed because you don't get as much follow through on the cue ball to get by the six. He did really good. With the little bit of movement there, he got a lot done. Yeah, the separation here looks like the one, right? But the long rail kick going to, you know, the short rail and then the side rail coming at the six. Mm -hmm. With the eight being there, there's a lot of things that can go, you know, well for you. Yeah. Here he's planning to split them one way or another. Maybe even banks it cross side. But a little tougher hit overall. Good possibility of getting separation here, though. Yeah, that's what he's wanting, one side or the other. Oh, and he got some. He may end up behind the eight. No, and the six is going to lay up by the corner, so a nice safety there from Lee Van and a good hit from Fortunski. It just didn't work out. You know, you, he made a great play, and you give up, but this is just pool. You can't fault yourself. I made a quality stroke. I hit the ball as close to the way I wanted to as possible. It didn't turn out. Then just get ready for your next turn. Hey, you're happy to get that swing at it uh, mm -hmm. if you're uh, Miesco. I have a chance to win game one. And I hope he can deliver that break. He did a lot of it in his first match, but watching him practice, and he might be the breaker of the tournament, really. I said that about Fetter, but Fetter really struggled in the last match and now is out of the event. All right, definitely missable ball, not only on the nine-footer, but especially here on the big foot. Yeah, prob I was going to say, and of course didn't want to talk while he was down, but I was going to say probably the longest I've ever seen him stay down on a ball. Yeah. I mean, he's not a quick shooter, but he stayed down a long time there. He didn't feel comfortable with that shot, and you described it first, you know, a little off-angle shot in the first rack. And rack Cost one the goes to Fortunski. Yes, go happy to come to he the table to with that two, shot. He'll be breaking. Well, I would bet a bunch of money <laughs> in all your teaching that You've expressed how the better players want to stay above that object, that, that money ball right there. And some amateurs would ask you why. Well, they'd rather take a little cut than fall on the rail and get a little behind that, that mm -hmm. object ball. That's why you see him get above it all the time. That's really the target zone. And I'm sure it was for Lee Van also. He just overdrew the ball a little bit. Right. Now watch this break, how effortless it is. Like, I don't know if anyone gets more power in the game off of a, a, a you know, average swing, medium speed, maybe. Now, he'll be more than medium here in the break shot, of course, but. Breaking from just right at the head, head spot. Yeah, he should fly the cue ball back almost to where it's at now. It's it right. Got a little quicker with the transition there, and now a dry break, so the commentator's curse in full effect. Mm -hmm. The break demon says it was 
So that's not as hard as they can possibly hit them, but that's, you know, what gets the job done and square hit. They want ball action as opposed to brute force. Yeah, he's got a sticky shot to get from the two to the three, and it's very important because of the four and five are a little funny. If he could reach it, I think he follows two rails out that to get the angle. Yeah, yeah, to get the angle on the two to come two rails to the backside of the two. I think using the two side cushions. Yeah, this is the angle you want. You actually want to be as thin as you can while it still is makeable. Now, two cushions to play the three in the side that it's nearest right now. Oh, he's looking to see if it goes by the eight, but I don't think that does. You well, have to that, land on it really good. Yeah, that would be the premium as if it went by the eight. But the reason being is if you go two cushions, which is what I thought he would plan for, you may end up off angle to get on he the four. He may bump the three here. Oh, he's going to end up getting decent enough, I think, to just take the shot on the four and kill the cue ball for the five. Four. Yeah, the three and then the, yeah, kill it for the five. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Just hold the ball there and mm -hmm. just take the little angle on the right. four. That little shave he got on the three going by actually helped him a bit. Wow. Well, he was able to go clear across. Okay. Well, you better hope it keeps going. <clears throat> okay, and it did. Yeah. If that ends up two or three more inches short. This is a little funny. And now the five is real makeable. Just because he's just going to roll this in so he doesn't have to worry so much about the position of the cue ball. Yeah, and that got away from him. Yeah, way yeah. high. That was weird. He overcut the four, though. Well, the good news is you're close. And the bad yeah. news is you're going to have to travel the cue ball. Yeah, this is the type he's going to go right before the side, right? Or is he going straight up and down between the nine going seven? Between, yeah. yeah, right before the side right there is what he was trying to do. How many times it points at that hit by the side pocket? <laughs> at least two. It looked like it rattled again, <laughs> actually. Me and Mark may be a little delirious up here in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Cross, Cross corner. corner. Yeah. And this is another part that he'll fool you. He can bank the ball usually. Oh, and the wrong speed, Jeremy. Yeah. It's, it's not good to uh, miss an off angle bank with the wrong speed because you don't you give up and it was hard to connect. It's okay to play the off angle bank if you're primarily emphasizing save. Yeah, this is a funny little shot itself. Um, just because it's a little thin, so he's got to figure out a route for the cue ball. I don't think he's going to kill the cue ball or kind of drag this in with a bunch of spin. Does he go between the 7 9 here or around the 9? I'm not sure what he's doing here. I think he's just rolling it, isn't he? Oh, he's, he's definitely a, has spin. Yeah. yeah, a lot of spin, you see. Overcut it? Yeah, he overcut it. He may get a little bit of a roll. Nope. He took a quick glance on his way back to his chair to see how much of it he gave up. Looks like he gave it all up. And he'll just come down the side of the table. The six is on. Wow, he cut that way thin. Hello, side pocket. Yeah. And what that is is just a little more deflection on the ball with that left English and caught it a little thin. That was definitely all about the cut on the six more than the speed of the shot. He really cut the six a lot. Now we had four of the Filipino players in the event. They couldn't go too far as a group because they all drew each other in the first yeah. round. But we do have one on into the semifinals and a former champion of Roberto Gomez. A little off angle. Can't go top and side and get across so easily to get better on the 10. I mean, you can get across, but maybe not get better on the 10. So is he stunning here? Hard stun, two rails to where he's standing. Yeah, oh, he's going he's three all the way around. This could get away. That's going to be perfect. It's dead. It's perfect. <laughs> now he can remedy that first 10 ball miss with a... Nice position play there for a routine 10. 1-1 one, one is our and score. Levan gets one back. Ties, thing up, ties things up at one game apiece. SBB about the kickoff. It looks three. like a Banks match. Could be one pocket.
There's Robert Frost. I talked about him uh, at the beginning of the tournament. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a deep run in one of these one of these events. Most likely one of the first two, but his nine ball game has uh, been pretty on point as well. Lee Van is always right here hovering around the money or in the money in this 10 ball thing. He, I know, right? He just quietly gets there. He's never won it, right? No. Nope. He, I think he's gotten to the finals once, I thought, but maybe it was just semifinals a few times. He's always right there deep as every single time. Wow. That's a good break. Beauty. Yeah, really nice. Look at that open layout. And you, much like you mentioned, when they miss hit it, there's a, oftentimes clumps of balls on one side of the table or the other. Look at this. Well, before it, the template was used so much, um, back in the day we played it 10-ball a lot with the hand rack, and it was kind of a, a fooler the way the break was just because of what you just said. If you got to breaking good, you're making a couple balls because the break was the same. Shane just kind of confirmed how good you could do it you know mm -hmm. we still played the same balls back in the 90s when we had the camel pro beer series we still played yeah. the second balls in the side and it just didn't get as perfected because of the hand rack i guess but um it was definitely a bit of a fooler because like you said when you miss the rack bad because we had to hit them pretty firm you know it would be like a rubik's cube for your opponent coming in trying to run out it seemed like but if you were hitting them good you made two or three, yeah. and, and you're getting spread, so it's kind of like Shane for a little while, especially in those longer race matches. He'd break perfect for like 10 in a row, then then finally miss hit one, and, and you couldn't get out. So, Do you remember the year in Cleveland when the 10 ball kept going on the break for everybody? You remember like each guy would have three, three or four? Cleveland? <laughs> was that Camel Pro Beers? Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, yeah I played it. it. Where, did, where did we play in Cleveland, though? I can't remember. Exactly where we played in Cleveland. Was it a convention center? Yeah. Yeah, but just the, the actual venue itself. It was just... Uh, had I to be 98, that. correct? 98? Yeah. I'm old. Yeah. I don't know. Because 96 and 97, earlier than 98. Okay. Anyway, it, it was an aberration, but it went in for everybody. It was making it three or four times a set. It was the oddest thing. Wow. Usually there's a loose ball behind the 10 when it moves like that towards the corner. But it was unilateral. I mean, it was no, I get down. it. I yeah, mean, it, was, yeah. it wasn't just one freakish match that sometimes that would happen. But anyway, back to this match. The 10 ball doesn't win on the break, so good he's, news. Yeah, he's got to pocket a long one here. And the Outsville wrecking template has helped that quite a bit, too, versus the hand rack. Is he going forward with the cue ball? I think no he's way. sending it forward. Yeah. And ooh, a missed yeah. shot. Might have moved his upper body a little bit as he hmm. abruptly lurched forward. Well, we always talk about Lee Van being a little short uh, on the backswing, quite a bit short, but usually gets through the ball, not quite as much there. That tends to happen when you're stunning the ball. But is that a confidence thing? I mean, he could have just rolled that ball in, maybe. Yeah. You know? He just doesn't roll balls very much, you know, yeah, I guess. I understand. He feels better punching it up there. but Well, it is preference when you're close to the ball. I think it is. Yeah. Because your accuracy should be, you know, at a premium. I know Martin that runs with Miesco, good dude from Poland, spent a lot of time in America. I think he went to school here, speaks really good English and always around the big events. I know he wanted to come to the Derby. I know Miesco wanted to come to the Derby badly. But a little surprising to me he's here just because, you know, he's one of the top Polish players along with Poland hosting the event, right? There in the World Nine Ball. So I thought it was a little surprising to see him here. 
and maybe not taken the fullest amount of time for that event right there in his home country. And no knock to the Derby at all, Mark. You know? No, uh, no, not at all. I, <laughs> we both know you love it. Yeah. All right, just one rail speed. It's pretty good. Yeah, if you don't mind the travel, I think it's tremendous training getting ready for the World Championship. Yeah. Ooh. 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 And, and I also talk that if, you know, if there are some guys that might travel out. a little bit extra breaking, because of that, are the guys that are just going home right there to their home country and not another place for making, uh, you know, that's foreign, right? Possible. So. That's Billiards yeah, Digest also. Cons. National Billiards right, Academy. Score of Cortez a three, Kutinsky zero. Mez but a couple unforced errors cloth. makes it two to one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was Put humor. the fooler on me yeah, right there. That was the attempt at humor. No, but I get it. And there's Cortez those, has won all three games, yeah, basically. There's those errors you were talking yeah, about. Six errors already. Yeah. And it's very easy to come by. <laughs> yeah, you can see that. 25 yeah. to 5 in the ball's pocketed. <laughs> that says it all right there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, both these guys are going to settle in and play even stronger. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And a few of the players having some troubles with the rack. You know, before our first match today, they had this table torn apart and were working on the table, too, which I thought it played great yesterday. So I don't know exactly, but something, a little idiosyncrasy wasn't quite right. And Diamond does not want that. So they had a whole team of guys here working on the table with part of the cloth off. Yeah, you said that. Earlier today, Van Boning beat Jason Shaw. And big difference. Van Boning broke and ran out four of his racks. First rack and the last rack. It's hard to stop that because he's not going to make that many errors in between those. Looking out here, just like what you said, Shane's playing a bank pool match. Baggy Lions playing a bank pool match. Five hundred players in these events. Just unbelievable fields here at the Derby. Pool is on the upswing. Yeah, he wanted a little better connection. He broke from the right last time, hit it on the left a little bit across the, the one ball. Wants to square that up. He took a little speed off as well. Mission Didn't get the pop, yeah. It's right. still 20.3 or 20.1. Our break demon. Yeah, he can cut this, I think, if he wants, if he feels like he can control the speed to go two rails between the 8-4 with the cue ball somewhere around in there. He could bank it as well. He's definitely not going to go defensive in this position. He's going to figure out something. I hate to go up this side of the table. Lots of gaps there, but if you're banking it, you may not want to draw your ball. I kind of want to draw my ball, but... He's going to stun heavy. Watch. All the way up table. Oh, no. He went just by it. Is this? Yeah, I didn't understand that one. He did get there, though. Ooh, treacherous little shot here, Mark. As mm -hmm. He's got to float it to play the four somewhat in the side, maybe. Or the far corner. Yeah, or the far corner. Yeah, that's the other option. But, yeah, the he's, floating part of it is. He's really good at the drag shot, though. And most of the guys with what looks like a very natural back and forth swing seem to be some of the best at the drag shot. Ralph Souquet kind of made his living on the drag shot. Extension. It's been a while since we hadn't had Ralph here at this point. I game. know, yeah. But I bet he's in Poland. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure he'll be there. Looks like he doesn't want to drag this ball and hit it light. He might go into the back of the 10, trying to slow the cue all down. He's like trying to draw road. around it. There was nothing there that going into the 10. This is what you get. So he was trying to draw around it, but then, I don't know, he overcut it, which didn't help the cue ball get around it. So, Yeah. 
Do you remember the World Championship? Ralph beat Tom Storm 11-0 in the finals. Borlang of Sweden. No, I wasn't. Oh, I wasn't there. It was unbelievable. Storm had beaten everybody getting there, and Ralph just got up there and put a set on him. It was just incredible. That was, uh-oh. He hit behind that ball. Don't think that was intentional. Definitely caught rail first, trying to skinny the ball up mm -hmm. over and back down the table. And I think, what was that, 95 or something like that? A little before. Right before I really started playing the bigger tournaments. I, I think 94, 95, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it would have been maybe even earlier than that. It would have been 92. Yeah, I was fortunate to play the one in Spain. Um, and then the, when Matchroom took over, I played uh, all the ones that were there in Cardiff. Unintended uh, double kiss. Yeah, this is going to get awkward even though he's six inches from the ball. And then when they moved it, I think, from uh, Cardiff to Taiwan, then the Philippines. And then I never played it in Qatar. I kind of not played that much at that time. And from then on, not played a whole lot. Going to back cut the two, try to arc the cue ball over here a little low. And he wants to slow down just a bit. All right, he's heavy enough. He should control. What's going on? Either going between the 10 6, between the 10, 10 8 and 6. Uh, what's follow versus stun? We'll see. Does he easily just go right between the 8 6 with the high ball? Yeah, if he's going up here, it must. Yeah, nice. That hurt for such a simple kind of play. He didn't really get much of the cheat on the pocket at all. So yeah. now he's got to address the cue ball a bit. Now, rather than deal with the 10, I think he should draw between the 8 and 10 here and just take the 7 back inside and play a longer position rather than trying to be real. Well, maybe he can roll by yeah, it. Yeah, or natural okay. into it. Oh, if, yeah, not, okay. if, you know, if it makes sense, right? It makes sense. If they, it's laying that you yeah. know you can land heavy, yeah, that's great. If you skinny off the edge of that ball, it can really... Uh, slow you down, but he couldn't have hit it any heavier, so good judgment. Stressing mm -hmm. over something you can't be stressing but, about. And I he mean, should go down, look, and, and just settle for on the rail, but do I want to be, I want to create an angle. I don't want to just stop it and be on the rail, froze straight in. Yeah, but, I mean, that's not hard. I mean, you can't worry about this kind of stuff. I mean, this kind of stuff, you start worrying about this, boy, there's going to be a lot of worries through the match is all I can tell you. And my point was that you can take it, you can go with ball width further or ball width back. If you with want the an angle, yeah. same degree of difficulty, you yeah. know, and usually you do want angle. That's what caused him, you know. That rolling ball hit in the first track. Yeah, it certainly wasn't uh, again, commenting about apiece. what you said. I was Heading more or less, you five. could see, he yeah. didn't like it right away. All right, we right. don't like it, but don't stress over it. I mean, yeah. there two, is a difference. 2-2 two, two is our score. We got a great fan up in Macomb, Illinois, listening in. He's certainly beaten me plenty of nine ball matches and in poker heads up. Rick Shirek, glad to have you along. He's a cool guy, loves pool. He actually belongs here, but he works. But he could play in this field and and run uh, run deep. Nevertheless, he'll stay home and wreak havoc on his pool league Monday night. All right, 2-2 two, two is our score. Van Van breaking, Lee Van Corteza. Five balls tracking for the side. Good, one ball's near the corner. Is he going to get a shot, or is the four and the nine ball obstruct him? It looks like 
Yeah. He might have a shot. No, he's got yeah. a shot for sure. Okay. And it's right in between again. And he'd like it a hair thinner yeah. to go top inside around the 4-9 or a little thicker to maybe put a little outside and just bleed the cue mm -hmm. ball across for the two in the yeah. you know, the upper corner right there on the, as, as you're looking at the screen. But um, Because the side pocket's not a scratch issue, maybe you can dig down and just attack. Yeah. You know, so and you know, naturally you can you can have bad things happen, but you can create something from nothing. Oh, here. that's what he's doing and you know, filler, filler would take the long distance shot on the two going three rails. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He wouldn't worry about getting close to it as much. Maybe even have to shoot it kinda of where the cue ball's at now, maybe even further away. But your that shot there, the one you commented on, had a lot of merit. Mm hmm Like I said you said the seven was covering up the scratch. Right, and so you're going to clatter off one of those balls. But you're not sure exactly, but it can turn out good. You can kind of create a break and run out from nothing. Yeah, really bearing down here on this ball. Really pressing early. I'll tell you, if the entire 16-man tournament had to break with an open bridge, I think Lee Van becomes the <laughs> yeah. favorite in the tournament. Really, yeah, I think so too. You. Okay, this is where you kind of slow pull it out between the 6-8. I don't think the 4 passes the side. Oh, it, oh, it does pass. He's playing the combo. Or no, really? You no, know, it passes. It passes. Okay, it must yeah. pass. <laughs> Man, I'm getting blind up here. What's going yeah. on? And the reason why he played in. this and the reason why it does make a lot of sense is just because the 6 doesn't pass the 10. So if you lay up between the 6-8, if you get a little funny, you might really have to work your ball off the 4 to get a shot on the 6. So this is okay. He's going to pull it two rails between the 10-8 for the 7 and the side. A little bit of a stretch for the right-hander. And this kind of goes to what you were talking about earlier in the day when you used to play golf on a snooker table and they put a ball in the middle of the table. How important this is exactly. Now your cue ball, you want to track right through the center. Yeah, it's pretty strong. And, and the other time I really got convinced of it, and I don't know how much that you watched of it, but bonus ball had a ball that stayed in the center. Uh, that was kind of like a foul ball, right? Or, or not a foul ball, but a scoring ball, but it obstructed a lot of things, you mm -hmm. know? And uh, it was amazing how powerful that ball, that one ball in the center of the table was. It's almost like, uh, you know how they set up when you first start playing, people that know uh, some little tricky things, they mm -hmm. set up like these balls all hanging in the pocket, and the racks out there and all you got to do is run all oh. six but i tell you which yeah. one to shoot Stop you know the because rack. the obstructions yeah. uh, those so simple obstructions that you wouldn't think right have so much meaning right so nice out here he's making i'll tell you and i think he's trying to find his focus a little bit you know like taking a little more time down on the ball just breaking the ball is great Okay, right in between, top inside or pulling the ball. You can never tell what he's going to do. <laughs> no. You cannot. No, I thought he might just roll it. I mean, well, he had a yeah. Q-tip on the left above center. <laughs> I mean, it looked like top inside one rail, and then he totally changed directions. Don't try this at home, folks. This is a man who's a trained professional. Nice break and run out. Yeah, very two difficult, though. For Corteza, and he now takes the lead. Three games to two. Fortinsky will have the break. And there's so many players, right, today, that you'd think, oh, man, I wonder what the match history of these. Maybe they've never even played before, mm -hmm. right, you know? So many tournaments around the world, different places and stuff right. going on. right. No, when I look back, you know, all the times that, you know, I drew Nick Varner and Buddy Hall and Rimpy and Miserac and in mm. key spots, you know. Yeah. I always tease Varner. I mean, he, my, Nick, you might not have even made the Hall of Fame if it hadn't been for me. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and you didn't even mention me in your speech. I mean, <laughs> well, thanks, Mark. <laughs> That's funny. I know he broke my heart in Tahoe. <laughs> it was a crucial match. Oh, man. Who's that, Nick? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I was never in his league. I was a journeyman pro. He was an elite pro, but we did have some great battles in Tahoe. Of course, it was, yeah. was three thousand dollar entry fee. We were in the money, and it looked like I could maybe do something. And then, no, Nick shut me down. Yeah, well, that's my roommate. He beat me in the finals of the World Nine Ball Championship. So, yeah, that one was. I started the match so poorly. I don't know why either, but. And then I started to catch gear, but it was a little too low. I think I was down something like 9-1, to one, racing to 13. He ended up beating me 13-8, if I remember correctly. That was such a fun trip. It was uh, 1999. I think that's his only WPA World Nine Ball Championship, by the way. And we all went on to the Moscone Cup, my first Moscone Cup, right after that. So it was just perfect. Oh, how cool. Yeah, and it was Alicante. It was, even though it was winter, it was very nice weather there in Spain and and a beautiful place. Michael Coltrane, who's here, he was on that trip as well. Kim Davenport, Rempe, a lot of Americans, Johnny Archer. Earl. Earl, yeah, Earl. <clears throat> that was a tough World Nine Ball Championships. Uh, a lot of people don't give credit to some of the WPA ones prior to Matchroom taking over. and All the Chinese Taipei players were there, and of course all the Euros. And it was a tough event that Nick won. Hmm. Even the extension won't allow him to reach this one diagonally. Going to have to get the bridge. Well, the other day... He's doing it like the pool shot this time. Yeah. Uh, the other day, he was very effective on a shot, even though it wouldn't say it was textbook with the bridge. That was nice. Really was. Very pure strike. I was, yeah. <laughs> I was feeling some trepidation for him there. Yeah, straight as uh, straight stroke, too. <laughs> to hold that cue ball on that line. And a big decision here coming across. I don't think he's going to try and hold it. I think on the 10-footer, you have to come across, but you have to get the speed right to be able to fall on the four. Yeah. Yeah, so I see what you're saying. If you go thin or you, or you run past it a little bit, big problems. Oh, nice approach. Nice approach. Yeah, that's good. And sometimes, he's to me, he's... When he's just a little more settled, mm -hmm. he plays his best ball. He's got so much ability, it's easy for him to get down and just pull the trigger a little bit. Yeah. But when he settles in uh, with his routine a little more, when they're connecting between that and the stroke, he's a tough player. It's very apparent what you're saying, too, about how smooth and that, that his ability is just remarkable. Yeah, I don't think there's a more powerful stroke in the game, to be honest with you, when it comes to effortless power. Mm-hmm. No, it puts me in mind of Shaw, too. And Shaw yeah. gets that just effortless power. Huge upside, this kid. Uh, he wanted to come underneath it. Or he, maybe he was trying to stun above it. I thought he would just pinch underneath it. He shoots so straight. Now he's in trouble. He's got to roll this. The other day, you said it best. You, you really think that the, the upside, and you're surprised he hasn't even already won more. Yeah. Big shot here. This is the missable one because you know you get out of line. It's not that they can't make it, but the psychological effect of you not being where you thought you should be, <laughs> that compounds that and makes it into a much tougher shot. So Levan gets an opportunity here unexpectedly, much like uh, Miesco had a couple times already, receiving one from Levan. During your years on the tour, did you ever play in Taiwan or Japan? Oh, tons, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, we had the the World Nine Ball there for like four years in a row um, when Matchroom had it prior. Uh, after after Wells, it went to Taiwan and then went on to the Philippines. Uh, that's where Alex won his World Nine Ball was in Taiwan. Of course, Wu at that young age. 
Uh, Japan's one of the nicest places I've ever been. I've been there quite a few times, probably seven or eight times, maybe. Because mm -hmm. it used to have the two tournaments, the one at the beginning of November in Tokyo, and then we'd stay there all month doing challenge matches, traveling the country and whatnot, and then they'd have the All Japan Championships at the end of the month in Osaka, which is still Believe one of the most prestigious it. tournaments in the world, now, just how games. nice of an event it is. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, it's 3-3. Three, three. And then, of course, you remember the big IBC event, the, the, the one corporation entity that well, came out and had that huge purse okay, event. The that, right. You know, Efren won, of course. Niels came second, 200000 for first. That was probably 2007 or something like that. Here was my takeaway from Taipei was that uh, the hotel was uh, several miles away from the venue and you get a cab and with the traffic and bicyclists and mopeds and stuff and the cab driver, they don't get driver's license, they just pay an entry fee and get a car <laughs> and they go screaming up to the red light and slam on the brakes and then when it turns the green, they go as hard as they can and there's literally families on mopeds but oh, I mean yeah. on one moped you yeah. know there's Before four people five, yeah. and he goes by him 50 mile an hour finally we got to the venue and when I got out I didn't care if I won or lost I was just glad to be alive at yeah. this point but it yeah, was you, incredible you pull up to a, a, a light in Taipei or Taichung and you'll be the first one there within seconds there'll be 25-30 mopeds around you hmm. wow his yeah. connection has been really nice on on the Break shot. Oh, and look at this. He's going to receive a good uh, opening shot here to run this rack. Yeah, and he can go forward now and play the underneath angle. That way he can reach it easily and just kind of draw the cue ball out for the three. I think he goes forward from under underneath here. 19.4 miles per hour. I don't want to be stretched trying to stun into an area. I'd rather be a little underneath, especially because that's what he's going to look at right now. If I stop, how's that feel? If I go forward and play from underneath the two, how's that feel? So he can do both. I kind of like the forward myself. Yeah, I like that. It's just too many things you can do easily. You can draw the rail and out for the three. You can just pinch mm -hmm. and draw through the three. And you can reach it comfortably. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't force that if it wasn't there, but it certainly was. Now, he's so close to it. I know he's got some angle, but he can certainly uh, not use the rail here if he wants. Yeah, he cheated the pocket even. He got closer, and that's so good because, the well, the four does go by the six. So he, he does have a side pocket. But now he can play real tidy for the four in the corner. Cortez is trying to stretch it out a little bit here, Mark. Like there you'd think he's following his ball, but he's definitely stopping it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he tilts his head a little bit like, I didn't quite get as much as I wanted on that angle. Yeah, and he always wants to be above with the tip. Watch how he'll come down even though he's following the ball a little bit where he actually strikes. Could draw the ball here. Could come two rails with top and side. And this is where, with so much space, you don't have to do the top and say, might go one rail, huh, Mark? That might go two. Oh, well, okay. No, just yeah, the camera fooled us, I think. He had more angle on that ball than we thought. They don't have one of these in the Philippines. I don't, I've never heard of them playing really on the 10 footer. I wonder what makes him. You know, it almost seems like Lee Van, he plays in it every year because he loves it. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, because he's such a good position player, I think this really kind of lends itself to his skill set that he didn't have to make hard shots because he gets that cue ball in the right spot a lot of times. Yeah, and, you know, if he settles in, he's going he's gonna to beat a lot of guys because of that good brain. 
And just what you said, you don't know of a 10-footer in the Philippines, but I'll tell you what they don't have is a 7-footer. Yeah. You will not find Every city block has at least one pool room, but it's only 9-foot pool, and they wouldn't even play on a 7-footer if you had it over there. Uh, you got in between. Careful. You got the, no. One or the other. Yeah, the, <laughs> you know, I mean, the stretch doesn't help no, on those shots. No, this really about. hurts him. Yeah. Well, speed control on the nine ball. Uh, when you're stretched, uh, you know, it's easy to give up on it, right? So you're worried. And yeah, you want to make a commitment and go all the way or not. If that's what you're going to do. But he got in between here. You could have, I mean, there's ample room to go all the way. You can go, I mean, you, well, you just couldn't go too far. Look at this skew up in the air. There's, a, there's some serious degradation of accuracy when it's elevated like that. Okay, another 10 ball given away here. But Miesco doesn't mind. No, and that was to get a three-game lead and really kind of feeling like total control when it comes to momentum. All that elevation for every, when the cue's not level, for every degree of elevation, you lose 2% of your accuracy. And he was up there, you know, Eight nine degrees. When you reach ten degrees back. of elevation, he starts to three percent. You're talking about his with, the, with the bridge. Yes, yeah. yeah, he was way up there. I tried to make mention of the big shout out to the great demon of our sponsors, Paul. It doesn't right mean that he for sure misses. Hand. It means that and, uh, lends they use sound technology to measure the Here's break. More stats. You ever uh, interested in it for your room or maybe your pool room? Fifty-six Talk to Paul balls and, uh, pocket. He'll tell you all about it. Fourteen. Thank the break and demon. Only four to the three. sponsors right. here at Diamond Bigfoot. Right. Ten Seven thirty-seven. Just because he this hasn't really had a whole lot of opportunities break. to raise it after a few in mistakes. Racket. Eight seventy-five. You feel like it should be probably five to two or worse. Yeah. There's the rack track. National Beard Academy. They split the first four. Cortez got another one on the board. Now Fortunski with two in a row. One of them definitely served up. Let's see if he keeps taking off the speed. So when he warmed up, he wasn't uh, wasn't hitting that one that looks a little more controlled. Great hit there. Ten move. That's never a good sign as far as trying to make the balls that. We're used to making. Cue ball almost froze on the end rail. Hmm. If he wasn't froze, he could yeah. get out this beard right here, but man. You know, Fortuski's won three games, but two of them were on hanging ten balls, right? He was gifted. I think he's got to take this shot on. I mean, what are you going to roll out to? You certainly can't roll out. The safety looks pretty terrible. You can't roll out with the ten near and Mm -hmm. And there's a reward if he can make it. There's a little threatening five ball, of course, right. but the four's over the side. I think he's supposed to shoot here. Do you see a safety mark no, you like? I, do I don't. I mean, half that is because you're on the rail, right? Long ways away, so I think he's got to attack. Well, and plus, that's your game, a straight shooting. That's what this kid, that's what he come here for, so... Doesn't mean you never miss us, but he can't back off here. Yeah, that was sweet there. Here. The little lefty, smooth lefty coming right on through. Yeah, and look at how he swung the cue, right? Not trying to be accurate. That's what I always say. The swing itself is the most accurate and how well everything held its line. Really, really great stroke. A lot of guys try to like aim, aim, aim and forget mm -hmm. to swing the cue, you know? Yeah. Oops. Good job there to not have a let up. That, that, that's still an awkward shot that's missable, and especially if you just blink at the wrong moment or flinch. Mm, yeah, he's sizing up a 5'10". Just got to make sure you get the cue ball in the position you want if you decide to play this 5'10". Five, 5 doesn't pass the 8. He could move it a long ways if he wanted. Yeah, I think this is okay. Big favorite here. And like you said, the minimal amount of cue ball travel to get into a position where you're a big favorite. you got to like that. I 
And now we're tied. Four games apiece. Well, you should have been in the last again. game. Four and an after even bigger shot direct. on the two, you would say, from Fortunsky to tie our match. Moving into rack nine, Lee Van will have the break. Coming up next, it'll be uh, Conrad Yusheshin versus Joshua Filler. There's Rob Hall. He owns a great pool room called Bumpers in Huntsville, Alabama. I love that place. I go there twice a year. You need to find your way there, Jeremy. What's the name of it? Bumpers, you said? Yeah, in Huntsville. Oh, I've been there. Okay. I've been there. That's a good room. Yeah. The man's name you mentioned? Rob Hall. Hall? Yep. Yeah, what's the, what's the, is that the father's son? Um, no. Duo. What's the father son duo? I saw him earlier. He's both of them are very good players. From they play at Bumpers. Uh, dang, slipped my mind. Does a little commentary here and there as well. Chance Rosick. No, you definitely know the man I'm talking about. I feel like you would. And huh. how's he breaking them? By the way. Oh my goodness! Yet again, real good. Nineteen point four. Yeah, if you can't get enough of this three, this is going to be an odd shot to get at the four. And if he has to play a rail first, he's kind of got to gamble. If he can't get a thick hit on the three, it's going to be hard to come one rail cross drawn past the ten. If he goes thin, though, I'll tell you what he could do. He could go between the nine ten. That's not terrible. I know it looks like, oh, man, that's a small gap. He's going to try and go inside. This may kind of fizzle and not move much. See that kind of kind of yeah yeah because when you have to get into the ball, which is what happens on a curve shot, that newer felt when it hits ball rail real quickly, it just kind of wants to hydraulic on you a little. But he was snookered. I mean, so what are yeah. you gonna do? I thought he may consider a rail first though. Me too. Because that'll send you a round table, maybe the back side of the eight to get the four on the side you or something like that. Drop right in between the seven and eight was what I was thinking yeah. would be the best choice there, but. As long as he makes this. Oh, nice, nice committed stroke there. He didn't. Look at that. Yeah, he didn't try to, like, like <laughs> I said, guide it in. What a beautiful shot. The audience recognizes that. Long, tough shot to get to a long, tough position. Mm -hmm. Did you notice something that we didn't see or we saw differently at the beginning? He got down and shot that one a little quicker, like he didn't want to think about it as long as it maybe he did earlier. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's a little... Bit of upset after that 10 ball in the last game. And sometimes you second guess yourself rather than sure. just swing. He's still not out of the woods. This oh. is a little off angle. The seven doesn't pass the eight. Everything's tough. Yeah. Now the position, you maybe have to stun it a little bit. I, I think I just take a little more cut on the seven. Okay. Just get just what I can it. out of this. Yeah. If I want to add a hair left, that's okay, but I probably just stay straight. Yeah. His speed control there was excellent. Yeah. Now he can just hold the ball as long as he can reach it. Make sure you can reach it. He can just hold the ball there for a little angle to come off the eight and come across for the nine. Even if you have a little angle, you can still pinch it here. Yeah, nice shot. Big crowds on the outer tables. The crowd's gotten bigger here as well, but we had two packed houses in a row for those first two matches. The fans got to take some time to eat. <laughs> well, it is Sunday night, too. Some of them have to go to work. Yeah. And crazy enough, there are a lot of Cowboy fans outside of Texas for some reason, and <laughs> they're playing a big playoff game. Against America's the, team. Yeah, that's right, the Niners. Well, Great rebound after a big miss in the last game. Another break and run out here. Cortez now has two in the match. Leads this set 5-4. Regains the lead 5-4. Heading into rack 10. Yesco will have the break. An opportunity to tie things yeah, I back I kind of up. think it shows you that 
in the last match, match, we just had the guys. Tonight, you know, Roberto overall broke pretty filler. well. Just it was a few Her of them he'd like to head back. Four. These guys are breaking pretty well. Can't hit him no more square, it looked like. Oh, uh, got trapped on the one. 19.9 yep. miles per hour on the brake demon. All right, where do you roll out to here, Mark? You can roll out, I, I don't know, up table there. Of course, you need the cue ball near the rail. Don't want to offer the bottom part of the ball. You definitely don't want to uh, offer an offensive shot from down there because he's going to take it. Yeah, Seems like I'd roll out to the other side of the table. but. Well, I like this side of the table. I'd roll out, like, you know, opposite of where he's at, though. You know, over. Right. You know. Right, where there's never a hope of an offensive shot. Yeah, and that's why the rail's so important, so he didn't just stop you and ho hook you behind the nine, too. He's passed this quickly, so maybe the seven's in the way of the cut. I mean, he didn't even consider it, and the thing is, he passed it so quickly, I'm wondering why he didn't look around for some safeties, maybe. Maybe there's not much of the one ball here. And it's all ball control here. I think I love that play. May not, you know, win you the game. You may mm -hmm. end up being behind the. I don't know. He might have left something here. Well, he left a piece of the, the one for sure. He's going to be aggressive here, coming two rails in behind the five, the ten, and the the four. I believe. The good thing is the five's really helping him out as far as if he gets the one up a little bit. Well, he played it simple. Nice shot. Ooh, gap. Nope. Swerve shot here. He's jumping. It looked or no measuring a potential jump. I've seen him jump with the full cue before. You cannot use a jump cue. You cannot use your break cue. You have to jump with your playing cue. I might take a rip at this one instead of rolling it. Uh, I feel pretty good about the one rail hit on the one myself. Anyways, I think he's got a lot of action, and I think the way the ball's laid offers for just as much safety with some luck like that. Just take a chance. May not work out, but. <laughs> Looks like it's the one, two, three, four, ten. So a couple of important balls here. But a two is not an easy ball to get on. Yeah, he should be able to get there, though, just as long as he didn't go on the side. Oh, my. I'm a little surprised he went on that side of the table. I mean, I thought he could go with a high inside and go top rail, side rail, and back underneath the nine uh, off, the, off, the, off the top rail. But, and that's not a hindsight kind of thing. That's just what I felt like he was going to do. 410, huh, Mark? Yeah, I guess. I mean, it lays you don't pretty have a whole good, lot of think. choice. Yeah, I think it lays pretty good. Just got to set up to draw your ball uh, off the off the three. You could set up to follow it around the table. Well, I will say this. 
If you have ball in hand, the 410 plays pretty nice. But if you don't have ball in hand, it can be a bear. Yeah, but I mean, what are your other options? No, I understand yeah. that. Yeah, yeah you, well, one, you can even attack that clutter. Right Looks now. like he can draw this with maybe low left. He can go around the balls if he wants to force it up the table. Bunch of them are playable. Looks like he's going to go around. So speed's crucial. Oh, he just went one round. He's, he's going to love this. A little scary going by that seven. Yeah, he got on it pretty nice. On oh, a big scratch there from Lee Van. Man, it is. Man, it ties things once again. All tied up at five. After ten racks, five five. Jeremy, you go home from here for a day, and then you're off to Poland. Is that the story? About 18 hours, I think, I'm at home <laughs> before I catch Get uh, some fresh clothes, kiss Amy, yeah. pet the dog, and away. Yeah, Just catch me some Mexican food before I go to Poland. <laughs> <laughs> so, first things first, you know, Mark. How long will you be there? A week. Uh, so I fly out on the 30th, arrive the 31st, come home the 6th. So. All right. Yeah. The, the, I've really gotten used to the flight uh, from because there's a direct from Dallas to Heathrow, which is nice on American. It's only eight, eight and a half hours, eight hours, something like that. But then I'm not sure what the layover and then on to Warsaw is. So it could be a very long day. Well, it definitely will be. <laughs> Hopefully there's no delays, too. Man, he's hitting them nice. Wow. Wow. Tell you what, keeps breaking like that. And we know his experience in this, and he had never won it, but it could be his year. Got to get through. Miesko, to the begin Polish, with. Yeah, yeah, the Polish champion. Okay. Takes a little risk if he tries to get closer to the two. If he hits a high left, uh, you know. He can come probably to the opposite head spot, something like that, maybe a little past it. Now, if he wants to dig on the ball, just got to be careful of the speed and the route. That way the five doesn't really come into play, and I don't think the three's an issue. And it's going to be perfect, I think. That was a real nice hit. Now he can kind of just push the cue ball over into the ten. Use the three in the side. This is where you can't worry about perfect. You're going to have to make a little bit of a cut shot, but going into the 10 really secures everything. Otherwise, you're trying to play a deft touch or speed or side spin or something like that. And there you go. Boy, that was a nice shot there. And the 8 9's not a problem, so should regain that lead. Said that a few times when it hadn't worked out, but. He's done the tough stuff, Mark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, now just no let down. The seven ball's a little bit awkward if you have to have this type of an angle on the six. Getting from the six, like if he was to stop the cue ball where the five's at now. Moves it forward. Now he's gonna That's a reach, harder. maybe? He's going to have to hit it harder. Yeah. He's going to have to go across the table here. I think he should maybe even go ahead and just go all out for short side position, but maybe it's too thin. What do you think about cheating it and hitting before the side here and spreading off the second rail to the cut on the seven? Oh, boy. Like that. Now, I think he did it unintentionally, to be honest with you, because you would never hit it that hard. You'd always make sure I'm getting the cut. Yeah, that angle was forever going to be tough with that seven ball there, but that's why I was saying maybe you should go short side. 
Yeah, slow drag it all and the just, way up in the go, short side. And yeah. then that way you you can always defend yourself. Say you don't quite get there, you're never obstructed. No, I get that, yeah. But now, huh, I mean, this can be. Well, the thing about the slick table, that's why I always say you got to trust the bed. Because you got to give it that little extra time to grab those Englishes and that draw to be able to get past the side like you wanted on those shots. And then trust the bed that will roll out a little more for you. Look at the awkwardness of this kick, though. He's spinning it? Yeah, probably trying to come in there off the side rail, yeah. Beauty. What a great shot. Beauty. Oh, great shot. Fantastic. Probably gave up a shot, but still, from mm -hmm. where he was at, just to hit it and get separation, fantastic. Yeah, right on the 50 here. Slow rolling it is an option, but very tough. Uh, three rails with inside is the only other real option, I think. I don't think you're going to see him elevate the cue stick. Well, you got to be courageous to put left on this and go around three rails. Yeah. I think just roll that and let the cue ball bump into the 10 or just you know, kind of just get past the 10. Yeah, it way. might get over or past the 10. He doesn't mind the three rail inside, though. I've seen him take on some tough ones. Of course, this is the 10 footer. But otherwise, you have you have to go extreme, whether it be the inside. Oh, he's stunning straight back he, and he's across. He's definitely, definitely not rolling. Straight back and forth across before the side. One of the tougher ways to shoot this. Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow. Shot of the day. Well, he's a straight shooter. That's I see for that. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, even as well as he hit that, though, barely got there with the cue ball. Because it's hard to hold yeah. the line from that distance. You lose a little bit of that backspin by the time it arrives to the seven, and it turns over on you. And to hit it harder for it to hold the spin, then that makes the ball pocketing more difficult. So he kind of he picked the way the speed, the firm speed, that allows him the most likelihood of pocketing the ball. Now he's going to make another big shot here. Well, I use Real certain smooth. players of certain things, and if you ever watch Fortunsky jack up off the rail, not sure anyone stays more steel through the shot. And it looks like a natural steel, like he doesn't have to force it. It's just mm -hmm. kind of solid as a rock, really. But Big shot here with a little low left. Not a whole lot of left, but there's going to be some. Really nice. And really an odd match. You see all kinds of them, of course, but I'm sure we'll get the TPA stats in a moment. And Lee Van has really done most of the business at the table to be trailing by a game. Now. Has really his first good lead, tenacity six games to, to tough five. out that many tough he shots. He headed into rack 12. You know these guys never get to hardly play on a 10-foot table either. I mean, it's rare, just once or twice a year for most most of them. Fortunsky said that he never played on one before. Yeah, first time. Those were the words. First time. And he was happy about it. He, he, like, as far as, like, you could tell, like, fun. You know, he yeah, really enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So. He knows this is going to be a super challenge. Didn't like the way those settled. Here's the TPA. Cortez at 880. That's a super high level. Especially after giving away a couple games. Almost three to one on balls pocketed. <laughs> you know, it's a very rare instance where the balls pocketed doesn't indicate the winner of the match. If you look at the, you know, say at the end of the match, the, the ball count is Cortez at one, maybe pocketed 90. And the other guy, 82 or something like that. 90 always wins, maybe right? 95 percent of the time, just comes down to who pockets the most balls, which proves you got to defend the one ball like it's the nine ball or ten ball. <coughs> A lot of great things came from the uh, the AccuStats formulas. Learned a lot about pool. Well, I'm sure it was, you know, revised, refined. 
many times, right? So anytime you're doing that, you're just gathering more information and get more out of it. Uh, ugly ball. kiss, ugly kiss. Three went the down. Three. And probably only a safety play. But just having first chance to play safe is powerful with these guys. Yeah, I wonder if he can easily double bank it to the low rail below the 7-10 and just kind of hold the ball back there on the, behind the 4. Is he looking at something else? He's looking at moving the one, one rail up between the 5 and 10 and bringing the cue ball back over behind the 2-8 and all that, I think. Cue ball might not get there. Pretty good. Yeah, real good. Got like the maximum out of both the object ball and the cue ball, it seemed like. So up in the trees here with the back end of the cue around the six, maybe. Wow, good hit. far to see a banner of Lee Vans right here in the rafters. He did win the 2020 nine ball division here at the Derby City. That's another one of those, Mark, that if you go look, we talked about earlier, you rarely miss your mark if you're these guys. And not necessarily yeah. nestle him behind the five, but you make sure the one gets up where the 10 and seven give you a lot of cover. That's a nice one there. Mm -hmm. I can hit before the side, I guess, and get at the one maybe. But if he has to curve it, can't get a ton of speed. It's truly these little things that sets the Lee Van apart because it's not as overwhelming. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's the maneuvering of the balls mid-rack is where Lee Van just excels. Well, this is the thing about a player like Lee Van. As he goes to the tournament, of course, trying to be prepared, but his mind almost like keeps him in it. Um, and when he gets really settled in, that's when he has a chance to get one of those banners up there, you know, at whatever yeah. tournament he's at. Yeah. Once he settles in pocketing the ball and moving the rock, that's when he, you know, the complete package really comes in and he becomes a real threat to win the tournament. Yeah, not as visually dynamic as some players, but the, his consistency rate and some of his specialty skills are remarkable. Look at this. He played that ball. No off. rail. No yeah, rail. But yeah. If we get a look, did he play that off the back point? I'd like to get another look at that. I don't know if I've ever seen that, if, if that's what happened. I think he played it off the far point, Mark. Well, that would be a remarkable uh, testimonial to someone that's practiced that a lot. Yeah, right. It'd be <laughs> really tough to do. I could be wrong. My eyes certainly could be fooling me, but... I kind of feel like that's how he hit it. Maybe on a player timeout or something. Everyone, they got great guys working. They put some, some nice reels together for us to look at. Probably going to keep the natural two railing and look to come off the five. Yeah, see him kill the rock, come off the five, a couple rails between the seven, eight. Mm hmm. Yeah, very natural traverse to the center of the table here. And this is where, like, if you're a runner of the cue ball, you want more angle, right? To where, like, so he's not going to stun, he's going to spin, I would guess. Right. But watch how the tip's in the center, you see? Now watch the right English, a little bit. But my point being is, like Fetter, what he does is he'll gain a little less angle on it, knowing he can stun the ball. But he also makes it a less missable ball that way as well. Mm -hmm. So always maintaining that angle, of course. And then if he gets a little thin, he'll run off of it because he has that shot as well. OK, 
Okay, it certainly hasn't been the tough stuff that has gotten the best of Lee Van here a little later in the match. It's been a few easy shots, so needs to get a little draw stroke here. He's going high or draw? Well, it Who looks knows? like he's going draw. He's Hard gonna to dip say. Down. <laughs> he's going to dip down a little bit there. Well, just like uh, just like when he added side spin there, he was in the center and then went out to the right English on the last stroke. Drawing again, I'm assuming. And definitely the professional, we all know he is. This is twice after a big mistake. He's going to make a real nice out to make sure that the match stays in hand. Very routine 10 ball now. This will tie the score at six games apiece. And it will be Lee Van's break. Lee Van opts to break from just left of center table. Good square hit. The ball behind the one ball made the side pocket. And maybe the other one did too. Looks like two balls are down. He's got a thin cut in the side. Does play. Not easy. He's got a cross side bank. The thin cut in the side, you know, be nice. But uh, control, controlling the cue ball with an accurate shot might not be easy. I think he goes for an offensive shot, no matter what it is, the bank or the cut. Well, he's looking at the cut. Yeah. Thing is, if he if he doesn't mind shooting it with a little right, he can avoid, I think he can avoid the two coming off the second rail. He'll get above it. Now, if he has to flat cut it, no. Like there, that was Beautiful. a nice shot, yeah. Beautiful shot. He kind of put a hair draw on it, too, to take off a touch of speed on the cue ball. So real nice. Yeah, that was a nice strike of the cue ball there to filter that back four feet, pick up a nice angle on the three. Well, the 7-10, or 7-9, Blockers. He's going to have to figure that out right now. And he's a lot of angle. I don't know if that's going to get it, Mark. It isn't. Big stretch and uh, not a lot of angle, so... You know, I think he missed a play there, really. I don't know if we have the overhead. Let's see. Maybe not. We can't get it. But I think he should have stayed on the inside where it was laying and then come around and drop back, behind. attack behind, come into it. Because this is now this is a bear. You got <laughs> power shot stretched out, and then you got to have the right speed control to get the seven ball on the side. Yeah. Very hard. 
Oh, yeah. You, know, you better hope that yeah. settles. That may give him a piece if it does. It did. It settled. Okay. He actually has the side, I think. Really do think he has the side pocket. But you can see what I'm saying about Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. it would have been a better. Well, more angle, he moves it easier, so speed controls a little more. Um, just a little easier to, to command, right? But Super difficult, easy to miss. Oh, scored it nicely. Elevated Q, too, just what I told you not to do, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, right. Angles of the Q stick to me are fascinating and how you kind of instinctively use them for different things. And then, of course, the level cue has a lot of value in, in, in a many, many types of shots. So, and again, it always comes down to your type of technique. A little overcut there, but that's okay. Got her down in what looks like another lead. And now crossing over the 900 mark with the TPA. And third break and run of the set. Put Lee Van in front, 7 6. Here's Jesus Atencio entering the arena. I'll tell you, he's been with Divinity Cues for a long time, Lee Van. At least uh, as long as I can remember. Like 15 years or so. Yeah. Yeah, when I think back, yeah, I think always. Pat Davini's a great guy, too. I think the world of him and his son, Danny. I don't know Danny. I've met Pat. Don't really know him, know him. Well, good Midwestern values. Everything you'd want. His word is his bond. Builds great cues. Supports the sport. a little choked up at a dress on the break shot. Oh, very good hit. And he keeps getting very that same kiss, but that's not going to hurt. Look at this. Nice layout. 19.6 miles per hour in that break. He's just going to draw out one rail and get on the two ball on the side. Uh, no. Yeah, I didn't think he would go side pocket. I watched him, and I played him a few times. He keeps it really simple. I mean, don't get me wrong. He's kind of opened up his game as far as knowledge of the game and mm -hmm. understanding some things, but very similar to filler in a manner uh, as far as uh, when he sees simple, it's staying simple. You know, when yeah. he sees a little more complex, you know, he'll, he'll open open it up a little bit more. But but just so pure ball striking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we've seen that. Like, yeah. to me, if he got a little more of these tournaments on the 10-footer, I think he goes up as one of the favorites to me, but just because once he gets more comfortable on some things and he definitely has all the tools. Yeah. Um, you know, one of – not – the favorite, you might say, but, you know, up there with Filler and Shaw and, of course, Gorst and Shane. I'm, yeah. I don't think he's on the bottom half of the chart if you had to rate it. Yeah, and, I mean, we haven't seen even close to his game in this match. It's uh, It's gotten the best of him at times. He's just come two soft rails right before the side here. Take a little cut on the seven. I don't see the point put inside trying to track towards the center of the table. Just take kind of what it's giving you. 
This is again where you use the bed to come up table. Don't try to get into it. It'll arc on you then. You see how he smoothed it and took what yeah. he could? You try to get into that ball a little bit. No, it just doesn't seem to hold the path. Preference here. Most of these guys these days are going to wrap the corner. He might go with a high ball. He's got the uh, textbook you know, compact swing, though, where you don't see upper arm degradation. It's real tight in there. And it really contributes to his tip, you know, precision getting to the cue ball because you don't have to account for up and down. And compactness, you mean the, the backswing itself or? No, I mean on the actual delivery where the upper arm stays stationary. Oh, yeah. He has, yeah, real yeah. quiet. Yeah, he, he, you know, the higher velocity it does, the elbow drops a little, but that's just because of momentum after the swing, you know. Right. Kind of like energy's got to go somewhere. So there's small degradation right. in power, or if you have to stretch, sometimes you'll have a little degradation. Well, the, yeah, okay. Your stroke is spent, but yeah. I'm well, compact, I think short, right? So that's oh, what I'm, yeah. Yeah, there's no extra movement. You know, yeah, but he doesn't. moving parts. He has a pretty decent backswing, though. He doesn't really try to, like, but compact doesn't refer to the length. Right, that's why I was power. asking. Yeah, no, yeah. Not the length dictates power, but it's there's no waste of energy. We don't have any vertical. Everything's linear and horizontal with him. So steel, you mean kind of yeah. like right? Yeah. Okay. Nice break and run out there. Yeah, very good. That was his first one of the match. Lee Van has three. We're tied at seven. And the guys that possess that type of stroke, Jeremy, are tough to beat because they're so consistent. Oh, absolutely. Not impossible to beat, just tough. Even with Lee Van's two missed 10 balls, you know, which hurts, but he's still over 900. Yeah, that's because he's made about 80% of the shots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, he certainly has. And those breaking runs, you know, he could have had a few more, to be honest with you. It seemed like he's broke the balls exceptionally well. Broke them pretty decent in his first match. But uh, even better here. Yeah, Fortunski, you know, along with some other guys, is kind of the technique that I kind of prefer to try and teach people. Very athletic. Um, kind of lets the backswing do, do what it wants, in a sense. Doesn't get quick. It's not really slow and controlled. Just kind of like a nice, relaxed takeaway, which is the always the best transition, in my opinion. Now, talk about a good break, and there you go. There's the dry break right yeah. after we taught, brought yeah. it up. I think that was the first one he's had. Yeah. Fortunski's had a couple, actually, I think, early in the match. So he's going to have to take on a long one here, maybe, unless he wants to get into the cue ball and get around the seven. But then that brings the five into play a little bit. I don't mind just rolling this in and coming out on, you know, this side of the seven and just taking a long shot on the two because the three so handy. I hate to get into this ball and end up a little goofy. I think he goes around the seven here. It's easy, huh? I think it's not as bad as we think. Okay. Well, 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 he tried to control the speed and it let up a little bit. Now yeah. he's got a much tougher shot than if he just rolled it in, right? If he, yeah, I was thinking if he gets up a little bit, then he can billiard the six or the ten ball open from the two, you know. And the, yeah, but uh, he might have been thinking that way too. But like you said, he did let up a little bit. Well, anytime you look at a shot, and if you looked at him, he shook his head immediately like it wasn't in love with it. Mm -hmm. If there's another option and you're so skilled, why not just stay away from the one you don't like so much? This could work, though. Pure shooter, I'll tell you. Man. Street Pure shooter. shooter. Yeah, street shooting will be on his business card. That's what he does. Yeah, and like I said, it uh, doesn't pause at the cue ball too heavy. It's just everything looks very natural. And the real big deal, in my opinion, to, to all these straight shooters, of course, some fundamentals that are incredible, but 
Watch how the back and front just kind of work together, the back swing and the front. They just kind of feel like they're a unit, even though they're not the same speed. Mm-hmm. All right, does he, does he go one rail towards the clear side of the table for the five by the eight in the side? Looks kind of mm -hmm. natural-ish. The only thing is, if you go just pure high ball, now the side pocket's in play. Well, I think he might check it a hair with like, okay, or even yeah. go, or even go before the side to go past it. You know? Yeah. Because remember the five by ten on a nine foot, you might not like that two rail angle before the side, but on the five by ten, you got a little mm. more room to spread mm. that ball. No, right? exactly right. Yeah, you pay the price in terms of distance, but sometimes you have a little more room to work with too. Yeah. So. Probably needs a, a flick of something inside or out. Not much. Yeah, he hit it beautifully. He did. Beautifully. He put his tip over there on the side, yeah. on the side reel where he wanted to hit, and that's where the cue ball did hit. Well, he had some of his best results last year. Uh, Semifinalist in the Whirlpool Masters right there to win or at least get towards the finals of that uh, European Open that was there in Germany. What a beautiful tournament that was. I'll tell you what, we had some great spectators that showed up. Very respectful and also very knowledgeable. This isn't easy for a left-hander, this angle. Well, I don't think he got where he wanted. Oh. Now, now he's got to come out and maybe get all the way across on the other side of the seven a little bit. Otherwise, he could hold a very small angle if he tries to stay in the center of the table, like here. You see this? And then you get real straight. Yeah, and you might get even falling away from it a hair. Which See him shake his head right there? That's why I say I may have looked at that one, Mark, and come all the way over. High right-hand English now. Coming at the eight. Ish. Yeah, it comes right at the eight. Yeah. He's going to get fortunate enough to maybe get a bank, but no position with it. No. This, yeah. This is not good either way. And this all started from the most simple shot he's had the entire rack, which was rolling the five to get to the six. <clears throat> he got a little funny on that shot there, and that's what kind of started this. The overhead looks like it banks, but here when I look down on the table, it looks like there's a potential double kiss. I think there's no bank. You may okay. twist it cross side, but I doubt it. So he's just going to try and get past the side using the nine. Making Lee Van come with a shot if he lets him see it. I think he can see it, but like you said, it'll take a monumental effort here to pocket this ball. And when Lee Van has to use power, that's when in his short backswing he gets quick. He's shooting downward. Oh, boy. He used to shoot pretty darn straight, jacked up, though. Maybe not moving the rock as well as some others. But yeah. He used to shoot pretty darn straight, jacked up, like that. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know what it is. I just watched him a ton, and when he elevates that cue for some reason. <laughs> he doesn't do it very often either, Mark. Crowd loves it. Yeah. I recognize that was a big shot. Well, you could hear that one at the blackjack table hit the pocket. Right? <laughs> yeah, that was good. All right, Lee Van. Yeah, it's got to slow down a little bit. Had just a little off angle one mm -hmm. earlier that. Now, yeah. That that uh, he missed. Maybe you should jack up on this. <laughs> <laughs> Can somebody bring a rail in, please, and put it right here? If he can stay smooth, the pocket will accept a little bit of a miss hit, but not much. Taking a little more time here. And he got it down. He's glad yeah, that nice shot's shot. Yeah, yeah. that whole rack. We've One seen a couple racks like seven. that where they were really scrambling tough shot series of balls. Patuski had one, and now Levan has one. Here's this shot. Love it. Here's a replay. Look at this shot, Jeremy. Yeah. Whew. Made me clap here in the booth. That's as good as it gets. Incredible shot there. Ten foot table, four and an eighth inch pocket. Hit the heart. Cue ball tracked exactly like he wanted. <clears throat> yeah, great job. Regains that lead. Mm. I think Fortunsky 
He had one lead at 6'5", is that right? I think he I did think he five. Was a, wasn't he, I think he was ahead 7'6". Wasn't he? Am I wrong? Oh, maybe. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Well. I'm getting tired, so. I don't know either, so. Okay, here we go. Ratunski. That's the pop that I saw him opening, you know, practicing. Yeah. Not the, the one that had a little top spin uh, like he had a few of them. Little 20.3 on the break, Demon. Yeah, but like an effortless 20, right? Yeah. Pretty easy. Okay, he's got a piece of the one. He's going to try and shave it coming two rails and using the six, I believe. Don't want to roll out here, even though this is a very touchy shot. Really nice. The full snooker there and may be able to come between the 4 1 and kick it. It's actually a pretty decent kick. Get separation. He made that look easy. That was not an easy save to play. Yeah. Because the cue ball was upstream from the one. So you have to, any little hit is amplified. You know, it's a little bit of know how, but <clears throat> a lot of skill involved, right? Right. And there you have it. Oh, wow. Hell, even. I think he was hoping to make the 10 there if he hit anything or else get separation. Definitely was going to get one. that. Oh, boy. That was that real quick. Yeah. yeah. No pause that time, Harley, either. Uh -uh. He usually pauses at the cue ball. A little awkward drawn across because he's got a little too much angle. Mm -hmm. It's a little awkward going forward trying to wrap around the 10. That's dangerous. Not enough angle for that. And not easy to go forward just rolling either. I think he's doing that like with a stun, really. No, yeah, he's spinning it. If he catches the 10, oh, wow, wow. really good. Good judgment, good judgment. And it really helped to have a 10-foot table for that. <laughs> right, yeah, absolutely, right? yeah. Gives you just that hint more clearance. All right, he's got to watch out just for the straight end. Can't end up short, though. And that's the other thing for his power. He's got a really nice touch as well. Which usually goes hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, usually if you have really nice effortless power, your touch yeah. is there as well. Okay, the 810 billiard looks pretty natural. He doesn't seem too concerned with trying to disrupt the eight or, mm -hmm. or, or do too much. He can, And the thing about the kiss shots, remember, you don't have to get close to them for most of them. If they're natural, they're natural from five, six, seven yeah. feet away, just like they are a foot away. Now he's lefty, he should be all right. Draw the ball back a little bit. Yeah, like right here. I don't want to rattle this ball, right? Trying to get a lot closer, like up by the side or something. So I may draw it back a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. Six, seven inches, but I ain't trying to get real close to it. He can just stop as well. Oh. Well, he's going to be perfect, but uh, he threatened right there, that's for sure. <laughs> Ephraim would say, stop your ball right there on the seven. <laughs> yeah. I've seen him do that so many times. He's got to hit this thin. Yeah, this is absolutely English. dead. He's going to have to manipulate it a little bit. Hard to miss it, though, for these guys. And there you go. 8-8. Eight, eight. Eight, eight, eight. Another very close quarterfinal match. 8-8 eight, eight is the score. Race to three now. To find out who moves on to the final four. Now is that Harrison Todd I see in the... Uh 
in the audience over there? I'm not sure. Do you know Harrison? Are you I still? do. Yeah. yeah, is that him over in that like rust uh, straight across black? rusty kind of jacket over there straight across about the third row up with the glasses on it kind of looks like uh harrison the guy might be a little heavier than harrison though and not only that he's listening that guy so he would have probably waved or something <laughs> yeah. if it was harrison you ever seen his art by the way harrison yes i have yeah, pretty incredible pictures yeah. yeah oh beautiful strike there got a ball down <laughs> Gonna get a good look at the one. It's gonna have some work though with the two on the opposite end and the three pin down down back down table. The good thing is he's got a perfect angle to draw up the side rail to get up nice and handy on the two. Okay, I think he's going to drag it up along the long rail there. Nice. Well, that last break was just one hundredth below 19 flat. 18.99. Got to watch out for the speed. Speaking of flat, can't afford straight in on the three. Uh, it's going to be close to that mark. <laughs> What'd you say? He can't afford it? I guess he can't afford it. Uh, he's got a hair of an angle, but now he's probably going to have to draw the cue ball. Oh, I don't think it draws out of there even. He's a little above it. The guys can usually create a little something. If not, he's going to have to take some kind of long shot on the four. Oh, this is really ugly. I'm yeah. sitting right on the line. And rail first ain't too nice either. Yeah, I mean, he can maybe force the angle. He's still not going to get that close no matter what he does. He's not drawing it? See how they can oh. get the ball out? You okay. can create a little more that, that you don't see is there with that friction of the draw. It's just some I don't know what it does exactly. It just does. So One thing for sure happened there. He got as much out of that cue ball as what was possible. I was sitting here. It was. If yeah. But do you notice how it was one of his cleaner strokes for power? Yeah. It wasn't one that he really jerked at, and I think that's why it turned out so nice. Boy, that hit the heart of the pocket, too. Well, he's trying all he can to keep that lead entering <laughs> the end of this match. Yeah, it gets pretty competitive. Had some... Uh momentary lapses earlier on but these last few racks starting with that big shot he made in the far corner jacked up you yeah, could have used a hair more angle there just to easily go and that's what also you can learn about the 10 footer you can handle a little more angle trying to make that stun happen right there but see, to, in my eyes, if he stays a little cleaner with the stroke, he actually gets more out of the cue ball right there. That's what I'm. my experience tells me. We'll see. Big shots. Real nice. The head popped a little bit, but he uh, hung in there good enough to get that ball down. A lot of these shots, uh, you know, they're so daunting, they will make you flinch. Well, it's a mental test anyways. Physical test for sure, the 10-footer, but a mental test. And then, you know, with the tighter pockets, that can get between the ears quickly. Uh, edging closer. Double JD that final it four was. Yeah, it was a nine, nine. Yeah, that, was that was a break and Fourth run. one of the set. And certainly after he got flat on the end rail down here, I did not think he was getting out from there. But he did. 914 as well. Yeah. And just think what it could have been. Super you know, strong. it's a few misses here and there. Uh, super strong. You certainly cannot discount him from getting first place in this event. No, for sure not.
All right, Fortunsky breaking now. Trailing eight to nine. Ooh, oh, no. Not the answer. Oh, a two hallelujah. Ball that. Hallelujah for Fortunsky that the two ball got tangled up. Well, this is one that he is a very possible three foul situation just because he can knock the one down in a lot of congestion. Now, he could try to break this out, huh? Try to break yeah. this out. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably the right play rather than the safety. He's going to try and come across the seven. Needs a little speed. Doesn't want to get a double kiss and have the seven kind of lay up there and Behind his back, draw. Yeah. He's, he's thought better of this. <laughs> Much approved. Well, he wants to get the one way down there. This is the issue here. You don't want to just lay it up in the mid. Oh, my. He, he decelled. He went back quick and let up. Yeah, he knows he punched, poked, jerked. He's yeah. laughing at himself. Anything but that. Take that, he said. You know, he could have banked it this way, put the cue ball on the other side and banked it down. Yeah, right, you know, right. I mean, and then he wouldn't have had that issue of being punchy and I, I might have froze myself on the rail and got more behind the one and just put the cue straight up in the air. Almost like Fetter shot that combination earlier with ball in hand on the 110. You saw yeah. he got behind it and he yeah. put the cue straight up in the air and maybe something like that because he definitely wanted the one down table not only for this first snooker but for the possibility of a three foul with the two so ugly. Well, you know, I mean, the other thing, you can shoot the one over by the two, right? If you feel right. good about it. No, I'm saying, you know, and then just tickle the cue ball up on the floor. And then That's what even I say. If, if he hits it, yeah. a lot of times something opens up or right. whatever. Yeah, I was thinking about that. If you if there was a way to really lock him up on the four to where it was like kind of no hit. but yeah. Now he's played position to play safe. But it's not a lockdown safe. Yeah. You know, so. The problem is, if you leave any piece, you probably leave a lockdown safe. Yeah. You know, unless yeah. you really run the rock. He can't edge it enough to get behind the four. What's he looking at? Yeah, that would never happen. I'll tell you what, he did pretty darn well, though. He, he did, did leave a piece, but pretty well. It's going to be real hard to stop him from getting some kind of shot. Fortunsky, I mean, is going to have a hard time denying access to the two. Well, this is, you know, not easy. No, oh, queuing's terrible. How about, you know, a lot of times the kick shot is a better deal here. And because you can send the two ball down. Or know, double bank it, yeah. They're both about the same thing, right? Uh, if yeah, you yeah, yeah. I don't blame that shot, to be honest okay, with you. But that's what I'm saying. If you kick at it for the same thing, then, and the, then it goes, the two ball yeah. doesn't go as often. Where it's shootable, there. yeah. Let's see, is he going to just level out and roll it in, I guess? Hmm. That's not much fun. <laughs> well, I'd love to see him elevate just so you yeah. can see what I talked about earlier where he's so Look, steel. Here you and go. that's why he's doing it because he's, I mean, I might jinx him, but watch how, how steel the body is and how well the cue holds in place after the strike. 
Yeah. See that? Wow. Went straight as a board. Uh huh. Man. Love watching him jack up yeah. off the rail, I tell you. Yeah, that was high quality technique there. Yeah, to me, it's like Earl at his prime, but almost better just because Earl had a little more movement with the body and stuff. He'd still get it down because his innate ability was just incredible. And, right. You know, but, but really, as far as how to shoot it, this is the guy to watch. Look at that. Look, see? That yeah. one wasn't jacked up near as much, but did you see how he planted everything so well? You said it the best that I, I, all I can do is agree. That was a perfect call. Yeah, we still haven't had a hill hill yet. It's coming, though. <laughs> I think we are just getting ready to draw or drag. I think he's going to draw and bump in the heat. Yeah. Yeah. Nice shot. This is where you come two rails kind of aggressively at the seven. When you have good position, try and keep that good position. Yeah, no reason to lay up there. You know, you want to get close to it. That way you can you can kind of overcome any extra angle you might get. Traveling along here. Yeah, what do you do, Mark? You one rail across for the side um, with a high ball coming out, or do you pull it by the 10? I mean, I'm not saying there's a right or real right or wrong, Yeah. but there's got to be something that plays a little easier. I kind of like the high ball coming across. That's what he's doing. Yeah, I like that. That's the shot I like the most, but... Economy of travel didn't require a stroke. Yeah, just a little touch, a little bit of a hit on the object ball, and, and you're pretty home free. Boy, he's a good ball pocketer, man. Yeah. Well, I just think fundamentally he's just so sound and, and, and of course, got a lot of ability. Yeah. And we're tied up again. Ability. Down to a race to Textbook two. Form. 18 racks. Yeah. Really, really fun to watch, like all these guys. 9-9 nine, nine is our score. The adrenaline's flowing. This match is worth two thousand dollars. Looks like Tootsie's requesting a timeout. I think he's got to do it on his turn, right? Right, yeah. and that was what Ricky Bryant informed him. And that makes sense. Shouldn't be able to interrupt your opponent's momentum. Okay, open the uh, bridge here. Good square hit. Nothing found the pocket yet. Dry break. Now the request is timeout. So we will be right back after a short player intermission. Okay, now we're back. Must be snookered, looking at the rollout. If he had the one, he'd come across it and try and use the eight, I think, somehow. But this is where I'd like to, like, feather the seven onto the three when I roll out to the in rail or try to. It's 9-9 nine, nine here. You don't. Pretty tough. Yeah, he did. You don't want to. You certainly don't want to roll and have the cue ball maybe lightly hit the the one and then nick the eight and scratch. I'm wondering what he's looking at. He's got to be looking at the one into the eight ish. 
two rails between the five and six and down behind the two. And just the way he was looking there. I don't know anything else. Unless he's just cutting it in. I don't think that's the shot. But He might just for the back door safety part of it. Like that. One and two the eight. Behind. Trying to trickle oh behind the two. Tremendous. He rolled out tough. He had to. Yeah, you know. that's what I'm saying. The if you don't lose from that, then it wasn't a bad roll up. All right, a couple choices here. Behind the eight, that's kind of a bear ball. You could put the one behind the eight and sneak up behind the six. That's not bad either. Yeah, this one's Good pretty, control. Yeah, this one, the guys usually like it because it's real natural. Real good control there. Yeah, it's that's super. one of those little things that Lee Van does. Yeah, good luck hitting this one is all I can tell you. This is going to be something special. This might be... Uh, this is as good as anything, really. No, I think soft, high high left. I, I don't know if we can get the overhead from Pat here. but If we can, yeah, I think real soft speed here. No, so you're absolutely correct. That's the way I'm... And, and I don't think he needs left. I think... Maybe short with a high ball. I don't know. Is the nine well, kind of in the way? The, I don't the know. deal with the left is it tracks true or coming off that rail because it's going to pick up a little bit. Yeah, he's aiming short, adding the left. That's correct. And the thing about the side spin on these shots, and we talk about it in the Moscone, is you don't, uh, it doesn't open up on you quite as much. It's almost like you control the bend a little more. Mm -hmm. Right. It's real slippery spin. on the rail. No, not blasting it. Okay, good hit. Yeah, good job. I was thinking softer, but uh, that worked fine. I think he went with that straight high and bent it uh, intentionally. That's why he was able to get more speed on right. it. And on uh, the left, he had to hit lighter, like you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was the biggest target you had to possibly make a hit. Wow, this is not a tough bank. It's a little off angle, but he's looking at the 10. No way. Uh, I don't know. There was something about that stroke that didn't look really great. Yeah, he didn't cut it much at yeah. all. Here's another look at that. We can see if it was just straight He's actually high. got right. Look, to bend it. That way he can go short and then the right take over to bend the ball. See it arc oh, about yeah. the middle of the table there? Yeah. That's why the cue ball went a little back the other direction yeah. as well. Interesting. Pretty creative. Yeah, from a bad spot. That's for sure. He made something happen. And well... And go ahead, Mark. I was just going to say, from kicking and hitting it, now here he's got himself a offensive opportunity. Well, I think it was yesterday that we talked about or brought up that sometimes new felt can actually teach you about kicking a little bit. You know, like that shot there. Pool room felt, old worn in felt, that doesn't do that, right? Mm -hmm. All right. It kind of teaches you more kick shots. Yeah, always when True. we were young because we played on Warren and Felt most all the time. Yeah, you don't ever bend it back with high right there. We didn't like the, we didn't like the felt because we uh, the new cloth because you, you couldn't judge it like you could. Ooh. You're unfamiliar. Yeah, he's going to be overrunning the mark here a little bit. And he was quite steep. And the thing is, if he lets up a little bit there on that stroke, uh, he could catch rail first a little on that three and have a real problem with the cue ball. Or even catch it a little chunky also. Now, if he comes around to play the five back into the side over there by the nine, he's got to be careful of that seven. He can get on top of that seven or behind the seven with this. This is where he does usually have oh, good very job. good touch. He needs to get out of the trees over the six. And no. he bumped the six open. How good is this? Well, He opened up the cue ball. He's got a nice angle to track the cue ball. He's got to take a longer shot straight in right there. Yeah. I would be pretty happy about what just happened there myself. I mean, he could have got way over the six and been kind of dead meat. Now he can hit low left English. Uh, this but is he's going to be traveling a long ways in no man's land. He has to it's just right that last foot. True, but it's kind of the shot that they feel the speed pretty well. That's why I wouldn't try to get close to it. If you try to get close, you're threatening the speed. You see how he stayed further away? Oh, good. That way it yeah. opens up a little easier for you. If you come in tight, you're out of position for a real long time, right. like you talked about. Right? right. I was trying to get close, and he took the smart route. Because this is just stop the ball. You don't have to do anything positionally speaking, which makes ball pocketing a little bit easier. 
And it usually seems pretty easy for this man anyways. Yeah. Another one coming up is Countryman in the next match. Filler and Jushishin. Another guy, two guys, of course, that pocket the ball real well. Just make sure you don't catch that eight any kind of way. Now he's good. He'll take the nine up long with the ten over the side. And first lead of the match now at 10-9 maybe? No, he did get the lead there in the middle of the match for one game. Real interesting match, back and forth. Nice. Routine 10 ball now. Put himself on the hill. see that TPA rise a lot over 120 points 130 points he was down in the low 700s about the first quarter of the match or so to round out and find out who moves on to the final four starting tomorrow at two o'clock first match will be you know would probably be the best to evaluate players the best rating system would be if you could afford to have AccuStats throughout the year on every player, through every match, and then just take a composite. Because by that time, it, what it is is what it is. It's going to tell you exactly where your weaknesses are. We just don't have the capacity to generate it. It's only here on the TV table. But that yeah, would well, be I'd... the best rating system ever because it would be the cleanest and, and has nothing to do with the – has very little to do with the quality of your opponent. Because right. the shoot, you know, other than sometimes with a poorer opponent, you get better starts. Right. But for the most part, over a long haul, boy, that would really be telling. Well, the way the opponents are going, I mean, you're going to have a guy that's a better player than the other most of the time. But I don't think you're going to see a ton of fall off to where you have a big range of, of levels in most of the pro events going on. Now, the Derby's unique, of course, because so many players and it is another one of those great events where – you know, amateurs can get in there and in the grease with the pros. But I wouldn't doubt that the way the pool's going, that that's going to happen. At some point, man, yeah. that would be great. Epic. If you were going to have a really accurate system, that would be it. I don't think he's going to back off. Last break, I think he smashes him. Uh, breaking to close out the uh, match. That's just a controlled break. A little arm break. And dry. So Lee mm. Van's got his chances. Or a chance. Mm hmm Nineteen point five was our miles per hour in that break. Oh, man, what a shot that was. Oh, that that's worthy of a replay there. That was super thin with maximum inside spin to create angles that weren't there. Cue ball warped and uh, straightened up. It was. What do you do here? I mean, do you try to go low right to get it between the 8-9 across? Straight draw you could get across in that gap between the 6-4 maybe and the 8. I this is... This is a really treacherous decision along with execution afterwards. Is he playing off the five somehow? Three rails with ends? I don't know what he's doing. Uh, he's he's going to get across. Oh, wow. Look at that. Got the line he wanted. Fantastic shot. Yeah, and he committed to it, right? He didn't try to guide it through there. He just went in, made a nice swing with the cue and got the most out of it. Uh, the first two balls of this rack or something else. OK, 
Okay, a little funny. He's got a little more angle than he wanted. I guess he can go forward between easily. Okay, he went all the way to the other side, so he didn't have much angle at all. Yeah, we went through that ball. We couldn't tell from here, but he had no problem at all. He felt totally comfortable getting there. He has definitely created a run out here from nothing. A very thin back cut. Guess he has a little angle to pinch up for the side. I thought he would just take the six in the corner. Looks like he's going to go high ball. I don't know what he's doing. Oh, no, he did take the corner. Kind of looked like he went over to look for the side pocket on the six there a moment ago, but I like this shot. Well, it was, you know, by him stopping it there right away, it was clearly very straight. See, the eight doesn't pass the nine. Usually would use two rails to get on the eight in the upper right corner. Back and forth. Oh, it's going to go across to the other side. Caught the seven to the pocket a little thin. So he's got to make one last real nice shot here to get us to a hill hill match. Our first of the tournament, maybe. Mm, good one. Right in the heart. Now, routine two balls here. You hit that with low inside? I don't think. I don't think so. I don't you ball acted off the rail, definitely not outside on the ball at all. Maybe just straight draw, I guess. Yeah, and it wasn't even the extreme draw. Oh, there it is. Jeremy wanted the hill hill. Here we go. Well, since we're here, I mean, yeah, we might as well exactly. do it. Get our money's worth. Yeah. He's had a couple dry breaks towards the end of this match. But overall, I think he's broke the balls very well, so we'll see. What so happened to the last? <laughs> Lee Van up to 900 now on this TPA. got to talk about it yet but we do usually rarely see a break and run when it's hill hill and the bigger tournaments really any tournaments I watch a lot of not a lot but I watch some of the regional stuff back home with some of the guys uh -huh. and stuff and still rarely ever see a break and run when it's hill hill and it seems yeah. like no matter the level that's how I like to use the out see I don't ever touch them again and maybe that's where I mess up but I load those first eight right there, and then I add the two corner balls, and it seems to be pretty perfect to me. And the more I touch them, I feel like I'm going to mess them up. No reason to change the break, right, Mark? No, I, mean, I would say not. He's hitting them square. The cue ball's not tucking into the side pocket. That would be the only reason here. You no, know, he did have two dry breaks here coming down the end. And that happens, but if you're hitting them good... He had a little yeah, bit more power. I don't see anything uh, down. And it's going to be a shot on the one ball here yeah, for Fertuski. Sure is. A lot of congestion, of course, but looks like most of the balls have a pocket at least. And if he can get nice and straight on the two, he'd love to just be able to stop his ball on the two and have that little window between the six and ten to shoot the three. Doesn't have to get there, of course, but it wouldn't be a bad spot. Oh, he snookered, Mark. He can't make this. This camera view tells me yeah. I don't know if he can make it. Okay, yeah, that view. 
Maybe he can squeeze it in the left side. I don't side. think so. Maybe he can go rail first, round the two the other way. Oh, well, what is he doing? I have He's no idea. That. A low left, kind of Maybe trying to come across it. it coming up. Oh, he tried to twirl it in, I see. Wow, look at this roll. Wow. Okay, the savvy kicking Lee Van. Probably kicks to the left rail, trying to hit the one full. Bank it somewhere back down the table, trying to hold the ball. It's actually on the newer felt. You got a little room for error with this. You don't have to hit it perfect. Now, he could get touchy, trying to clip it and come back behind the five with some left English, but I like the straight high ball trying to hit it full. Me too, because you don't get separation trying to clip it. Yeah, you just got to get that one snooker, right? And that's all you have. Oh, oh, look at the draw he put inside, on. And inside spin to yeah. check it up and warp it in there. What a shot. Unlucky, the, really, that the, the one kind of opened up for the kick shot here. Yeah, no matter what, though, from where he was at, that's a great result. That's going to buy himself a chance to come back to the table with something better. Yeah, this sits nice, though, as long as he doesn't have to swerve his ball much. Just a little swerve. You don't want to overhit it. He could end up tucked behind the seven on the new felt here. Hits it well. Good view there of how still he stays. See that? See yep. on the new felt right there how it hugs a little more? Your pool room table would never do that. Right. But the new felt gets a little more um, draw off of that <laughs> kick shot. Look at this. Uh, Touche. Heel, heel. <laughs> yeah. Great shot. And that was all about the speed, not overhitting it. <laughs> Lee Van smiling. If you go in here with pace, you can make the one. You can also scratch off at either side of the one. I like the medium, Mark. I, I like making sure I hit it. Not not light, but, you know, medium firm. I think he might dice it in. Wow. Ooh. And now I don't know if the nine's open or not, but everything else looks a little better. What do you think the odds are he runs out here? Well, it's not easy. Mm -mm. This first shot tells a lot about it. After that shot right there, he got exactly where I would have wanted to get. I think he's about 60%. Okay. I don't know if the yeah. nine goes. If the nine goes, he's. I, I like him to be like 90%, 85 90%. All right. I was thinking from the one ball, it was about 50-50. Well, uh, that's yeah. what I thought if the nine didn't go. If the nine does go, though, I think it's a higher percentage than that. No, I meant for when the one ball was still yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, saying 50-50 yeah. he gets out because it is a tough layout, not yeah. knowing whether the nine goes or not. But I'm just saying it's a tough oh, layout. Oh, that's a great view. The nine doesn't go, so 50-50 probably was at best there. But he's a good player, so I'm thinking yeah. there's a chance he negotiates what? this. But there's a lot of work to do. I like just coming back simple here. He's going to go forward. That's okay as well. It's kind of what you'd like. These guys are at the table anyways. The good thing is we may see a nine get cross-side bank, right, uh, to end the match. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, it's That'd be exciting. where the eight's at, that kind of makes sense once the four's gone here in a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't see him being able to break it out with control. Do you? No. The six is kind of there to do it, but you may not end up on the seven doing right. so. Right. Oh, nice clean strike there is all I can tell you. Never touched a rail, the three. Well, now I feel like he's better than 50-50 to make it. Yeah. Hey, would you want to roll forward here? Or he likes to keep the stun angle off the five, but, you know. The good thing is you don't have to get on the good side of the six. You can go to the rail by the ten and right. still come across for the seven. Just don't get too th too thin on the ball. I think he's supposed to stay on on the good side of where the five's at on the, that side of the six. Don't come across too much. Uh, uh, tip came up a little bit, Mark. <laughs> well, this is, this rack will bring it out of you. If you yeah, pressure ball. That ball stops a. You know, a couple inches short right there. Right. This, this gets a little funny. He's got the nice angle, though. He yeah, can he's... stun across over to the spot is really all he needs. Yeah, and just slow draw across, making sure you keep that angle. 
the lefty. He knew his lefty, right, to reach it. Like I said, I think the nine ball bank is really what you want. Well, it looks like it goes in the short. I mean, if you get short side, which would be tough, but you could run by there and get in the side or the far corner, too. Yeah. If you don't want to play for a bank. Yeah, but the bank is like phew, guaranteed almost. Well, I'm, I mean, it's I the five by ten. The yeah. five by ten. Well, I'm talking about to get the position oh, to, on yeah. it, to get a look at it. No, definitely not to make it, of course. Right. right. And if you get a little off angle, the ten's near to maybe play a safety if you don't like it. If you try to play short side, he's certainly not going into him. I'm surprised he carried this much angle on the eight, though. Beautiful right, shot. Must go by the ten and the corner where he's standing yeah it, it did oh, but wow. now he got the funny angle here yeah and now the fact that the nine doesn't go in the nearest corner pocket <laughs> he might take a shot at this though. <laughs> he's, he's looking a shooter, at it i'll tell you that otherwise he's got to chip the nine uh, and run the cue ball yeah golly this isn't fun he's shooting looks like he can run it some one two three four rails around yeah, hit right before the side. Lee Van's going to have a chance. Yes, he is. Treacherous shot here, though. Treacherous. <laughs> I mean, not a huge flirt on a scratch, but it, like if you miss it a little bit, you could make it and scratch in that other corner. Yeah, you'd have to hit downward, I, I think. Uh, no. Uh, I don't yeah, know. I don't it's know. It's too. It's too thin. If you pocket the ball, you would think. Yeah, you would think. But the thing to, is, you know, do you want to roll it from this distance? You don't want to. I don't think you have a choice. Yeah, he could try. If he, the scratches, he might fire it and kind of wrap the corner over here, where he's standing. No, he rolled it. Super nice. Oh, shot. oh boy! Super nice Ooh. shot. <laughs> what a shot! No. He had a nine or a ten ball like this to lead off the match. You remember when yeah, he yeah. jiggled one? <laughs> I think yeah. he's thinking about that too. Well, he's going to calm himself again. If you can, if you can stroke it ro relatively calmly, the pocket's a little bigger. Oh, beautiful, have it. beautiful match! Great play by both players. Nice. Leave that. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got another match coming up. We want to thank everyone for joining us. That's our time for this time. Until next time, so long.